love to dance. Dance is my passion and it's something that I honestly can't live without. And, um, I feel so grateful that I have a body and um, been blessed with this talent to be able to dance and to be able to um, inspire others and motivate others to, to move and to enjoy their bodies. But Kayla Bagshaw hasn't always been happy with her body. When she moved away to college, a friend convinced her to start eating differently. My freshman year was definitely when it all started. I grew up um, kind of just eating whenever and whatever I wanted. I would come home and eat a bag of Oreos after school and me and my brother would have taco eating contests and I, for the most part, always beat him. But then when I got to college, my roommate um, was kind of introducing me to different uh, ways of living to do with health and everything, saying that, you know, certain foods probably you shouldn't, you shouldn't eat, you should stay away from that, or this isn't good for you, this isn't good for you. I kind of just started panicking a little bit. I went into this mode that was like, okay, whoa, wait a second. Okay, am I fat? Like, okay, wait, do I eat unhealthy? Like, maybe I shouldn't be eating these things. And I slowly started getting into these really bad habits. Her new healthy diet caused her to lose weight and people noticed. Well, I had a lot of people uh, come up to me um, at first and just say like, oh, Kaylee, you look so good. I actually had a dance teacher that I looked up to a lot um, that saw me at a convention one time and was like, and I was, you know, obviously really unhealthy, but she told me I looked awesome and that I was, you know, dancing so good. But she wasn't doing good. Kayla was anorexic. She obsessed about her weight, about calories, excessive exercise, and constantly compared herself to others. Um, I just remember just being really angry. I was really sad all the time. Like, I was not Kayla in the sense that I was so unhappy. I was so distraught. I mean, I, I wasn't myself. I, I couldn't function in a proper way. I couldn't really find that, that thing that just made me happy anymore. Everything just seemed to be encompassed around this entire eating disorder. But it wasn't until my eating disorder started to take away the things that I loved most that really made me decide to change and motivated to get help. After two years of beating herself up emotionally and physically starving herself, Kayla sought help from a nutritionist and a psychologist and began to realize the cost of her eating disorder. That's truly when it um, kind of hit me that this was something serious and that if I continued to let this control my life and go down that path that none of those things would even be possible. I wasn't, I wasn't going to be the dancer that I wanted to be and I wasn't going to be the wife I needed to be. Um, I wasn't going to get good grades, couldn't focus and I wasn't, I wasn't going to be a mom. Kayla is like many other young women who develop eating disorders due to negative body image. Everybody has some measure of body dissatisfaction. It's just a reality. It's nearly universal. John Parati is a mental health counselor. He says some people who struggle with body dissatisfaction can overcome their issues on their own, but others require professional help. Uh, when, when it does cross the boundary from, eh, you know, everybody has body dissatisfaction to some degree or another, is when the behaviors begin to be unhealthy and they begin to impact my living a healthy, normal daily life. pretty overweight from the time that I was in about second grade, I think I remember being fat. Being overweight never really bothered Brittany Ricks, but when she went away to college, feelings of undiagnosed depression got worse. 
It's easier to tell now because I can read journal entries from back then when I'm like, man, I feel like no interest in things that I used to love and I have like no energy and I just don't feel like doing anything. I just want to lay in bed all day, but I'm not depressed. I'm just really lazy. It's like, oh, well, pretty sure like those are all like symptoms of depression and not just like laziness. That's definitely something I can tell in hindsight, but at the time I definitely didn't think I was depressed. She had little energy to cook and eat, so she started losing weight, which brought unexpected compliments about her appearance. That like, even though I look skinnier and they think that I look so good, I am definitely not healthier in that sense than I was when I was overweight. It's like trading one problem for a different one. But like it used to not fit all the way around me and it's really weird to like look down and see um, like, the circle like fits around my feet. A further complication came when Brittany developed irritable bowel syndrome, which caused her to lose even more weight. So in short, having IBS is like um, playing Russian roulette every single time you eat food, like you eat the food and then sometimes my body decides it hates me and sometimes it doesn't and I have like no idea. But Brittany never set out to be thin. She didn't want or like the attention it brought her and she knew she was not healthy. And I can't deny that um, given the option between being like skinny and depressed and being fat and depressed, I would rather be skinny and depressed, but given the option between being skinny and depressed or fat and happy, I would rather pick fat and happy. But if I was gonna be like fat and happy or um, like skinny and happy, I'd rather be skinny than happy, it's true. As much as I like don't like that, Brittany has sought medical help, and to date she has lost 140 pounds and is still losing weight. She deals with her depression by focusing on things she can control, like reading, family and friends, and playing the piano. It's more weird to look at myself now. It's still confusing. I still think like I'm fat in that um, I still assume that I take up way more space than I actually do. think of it as like there's like present me and then there's like past me and I sometimes wish that like I could be there for past me um, just because um, it was so awful and I just it's one thing to know that like what other people think doesn't matter and that like it's okay that like things get better but Back then, it was just really awful, so. And that's the hardest battle anyone fights in life, is the battle to control your mind. So I don't, I make it sound simple. It is simple, but it's not easy. You, you, basically, we're working on it all our lives. Parati says people can help each other by having warm interactions and focusing on people's inner qualities and not just on appearance. And it's okay if you say your hair is lovely, but then to say, I wish my hair was like yours, you're subtly and not deliberately sending yourself a message perhaps that, well, I'm not as pretty as so-and-so. I had lots of great friends. I was very involved in school. I was a good student, but I think inside people wouldn't have realized kind of the torment that I was experiencing. It's self-created, but nevertheless, felt horrible about myself. Lorinda Belknap didn't have a problem with body image until she began modeling at age 15. I remember when I was younger, I have an older sister who's three years older than I am. She had some friends over, and for whatever reason, I remember one of them talking about making herself throw up, or people making themselves throw up, and that just stuck there in the back of my mind for several years until I got, I think it's around the time I got involved in modeling, that I started thinking, oh, I could make myself throw up. Lorinda binged and purged to stay thin for six years. It made her feel empty and out of control. 
and she started missing out on the important things in her life. Anyway, my mother made me this very elegant dress and I just walked elegantly and simply and there was at the end of the competition there was an awards banquet. Well after we ate I thought I've got to get rid of this, I've got to get rid of it, I've got to get rid of it. So I went up to my hotel room to get rid of it and I had won an award and I wasn't there to accept it. And it was for modeling in this beautiful dress that my mother had made. But as hard as she tried, she couldn't get out of the binge and purge cycle. And at that time, there weren't many options for treating eating disorders. So I would go through periods of time where I was sober, and then periods of time where it would just cycle down, and I would go down the slippery slope and start again. It would last for several months, and then I would come clean again. And it just cycled for years until I decided that I wanted to go on a mission and it was so consuming in many respects that I thought I can't go on a mission and have this be a part of me. I, I can't. And that was the time that for whatever reason I was given the strength to overcome it. Also, it's good to look behind media. So if you teach kids, look behind it. You know, there's airbrushing. There's, wait, that's a body double. That isn't even that person. Giving our kids positive messages about their bodies. Now, the more they get that, the earlier, then the better glasses they'll have on to see through the lies that are sometimes created in mainstream media. Kayla has six national dance titles and recently graduated from college. She feels she has her anorexia under control and is now dancing professionally. I do think that I overcame it because I'm, I'm not unhealthy anymore. I'm not, I'm not underweight, I'm not, I'm not sick. I don't, I don't feel depressed anymore. I'm not treating my body um, in an unhealthy way. I'm not abusing it, I'm, I'm taking care of it. Brittany graduated with honors in philosophy and wants to get a master's degree. She is now in a healthy weight range and is working to treat her depression. Like numbers don't matter, that what matters is being healthy. Whether it's the like number on the scale or the number on the like um, tag for your pants, but like either way, um, what matters is that you are um, being like, healthy for you. Lorinda raised six children in New York City. She ran a marathon and loves to travel with her husband, Brent. She thinks all women suffering from eating disorders need to realize that they are more than just their bodies. Focusing on appearance holds them back from living a full life. You are enough right now in this very moment. You don't have to be something else to be worthy enough or good enough or pretty enough or whatever. You're enough right now. 